So hello everybody and welcome to another Curval video. In today's video I'm going to answer a question you asked me when you were watching the Power BI Premium Licensing video. I actually explained um, how many licenses are available for Power BI Premium, which are actually three. Link down below if you want to check it out, okay? So the question was like this. Um, I have 60 users, pro users, so when do I hit break even for premium? When, how many pro users do I need to have before um, premium becomes profitable for me, okay? So I should have answered that obviously, but better late than never. Here is the video, here's the thing. Um, what I'm going to talk about here is Pro versus premium, premium meaning P1 licenses. But I show you in the other video that there are others with other pricing. So you use the same method as I use with here. Okay, so I will show you how to calculate that, and then you can use this for any of the licenses. Okay, first of all, so Pro versus premium. If we go to Power BI pricing, if you just Google Power BI pri pricing comparison, you'll get here. This is in US dollars. And it says that a Power BI Pro license is $9.99, so it's $10, and a Power BI Premium license is $5,000 a month. Um, the, there is always bats and leaves, like everything in life, so it is not, I cannot just give you one answer. And here's the thing, depending on your buying power, you might not pay $10. So if you have any kind of leverage with Microsoft, you will maybe pay eight or six or five or you are an ONG. Mm. So you will have to change the numbers to what your pricing is. Make sure you contact Microsoft to check what your pricing is, okay? So if your pricing is for pro $10 and for premium it is $5,000, then you know that you need at least 500 users, but it's not exactly like that. There is actually a Power BI premium calculator and all of these links, I will have them listed down below so you can use them and test them and do your calculations. Don't worry about that. So when you come here, they have set the number of users to 5,000 users. So this is for large organizations. They are almost those that will pay or have the money to pay for premium. So that's why they have an example of such a high number. And then you, ha you have, here you write your total number of users. Here you have the number of pro users. Pro users is the people that will need the license to be able to publish things in Power BI and administrate Power BI. And then you have frequent users. Those are people that are using or will be using Power BI as a reader often. And then you have occasional users. And you might wonder like, why? Why did they separate it occasional and frequent users? And I was wondering the same. Here is why. Depending on how many users you have that will be accessing your Power BI report, you will need more or less capacity. So if you just have, let's say that you are 500 in your organization, let's recalculate that. So they say if you are 500, maybe you want to have 100 per users, I think that's quite high. 175 users and 125 users, uh, occasional users. So here's the thing, if all of those 500 are always checking out your Power BI reports, you're probably going to need more capacity. So when you buy premium, would you buy this capacity at Microsoft? So you say, we're going to buy this capacity to host our reports and um, the more people use it, you know, it's like websites. The more people use it, the more uh, use and capacity is needed. It is also dependent on how big your models are, how much data you have, so on and so forth. You might need more or less capacity. So this is a way for you to not overbuy. And then you might wonder, like, how do I know that? I mean, how hard, if you are implementing Power BI for the first time, you don't know, right? There is one way you can do this, and is you can purchase capacity, like, like Power BI Premium EM, which is embedded capacity, and test it out there. Because you have the same levels as premium, it's just cost less because you can stop and stop, and you cannot use the Power BI.com and uh, mobile features. Everything that I tell in the Power BI licensing video, go check that out, okay? So if you aren't sure how much capacity you will need to buy, you can just 
uh, get the embedded capacity, test your app for a month or two, and then say, aha, hmm, I need this much. And then you can go here, and then you will see exactly how much it's going to cost you. But while you're playing with your users, for example, if you have 500 users, they are already telling you that one P, one node is enough, that is the lowest of the lowest, and that goes at a $5,000 a month price, okay? So you will have to pay $5,000 a month. You need to have pro users. For 500 users, 100 pro users, for me, it sounds like a lot. Let's say that you need, I don't know, 50. So then you have to add like $470 to like, it will be 5,500. That means a pro user license, if you don't have any discount is $10. So it will be 550 users that you will need to pay for a pro license before premium pays off. Okay, so I think for P1, that is a fair number. If you have no discount whatsoever, it's between 500 and 550 users that you need to pay pro license before premium is a profitable option for you. Obviously, there are cases that you just need premium because you need the features that premium offers and then you just have to pay or find a way to pay that fee, okay? So, do some research. Again, if you aren't sure of how much capacity you need, if you wanna test Power BI Premium, get the EM license. The EM license was around $600 a month and you can post and start at any time you need. So you can, for example, you know, remove it in the evenings or something like that. So it's not running just because. And that will give you a good idea, okay? So I hope the video was useful. I hope it is clear now when it is profitable for you to uh, move into Pro. Make sure you contact Microsoft to know your licenses. Make sure you your license is priced. Make sure you test it first, use an EM um, capacity, and then you're good to go. And you're going to be, Congratulations if you are there. Premium is an amazing, amazing product, actually. Okay, stop talking. I'll see you again on Friday where we will talk about uh, the formula engine and the storage engine for DAX. So we're going to see how the DAX make these calculations. So hopefully it will help you understand how you can write your measures to optimize them for DAX. Okay, until then, bye bye.